Hi, I'm Yumna, and today we're making roasted butternut squash soup. Um, it's one of those recipes that's so perfect for fall. It's vegan, it's keto friendly, and it is just so yummy and cozy all around. So I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to make, and um, we're gonna get started. So first of all, we've got um, a large butternut squash, and what we're gonna do is cut it in half lengthwise remove the seeds, then cut them into chunks and roast them. So um, if you wanted to, you can also buy these prepped already. They come cubed like that in some of the grocery stores. So you can totally go that route and you can use about three to four cups of butternut squash. So let's get it started. So this is what it looks like on the inside. And we're just gonna use a spoon to remove all the seeds from the inside. It's usually pretty easy to do, especially with a squash this small. So. Not too bad, just kind of remove them on the side and make sure that there's any um, hairs or like the fibrous parts, just to kind of take those out as well. So we have a nice smooth butternut squash. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And before we finish chopping this, I'm gonna go ahead and preheat the oven at 425. So the way I like to cut this is basically just flip it one side down, cut it in half, then place it straight side down and just slowly start to remove the skin. You can also use a peeler if you prefer, but I think it works really well with the knife. So this is what we're looking for, about two inch cubes like this, and you'll just want to toss them right on a baking sheet. We'll do the same thing for the rest of the halves. Cut them in half and slowly peel away. This was not a very ripe butternut squash, as you can tell, so it's a little bit harder to cut. Um, but hopefully, after roasting it in the oven, that'll take care of it and um, it'll bring out some of the flavor. So we're gonna continue doing this for the other half of the butternut squash. So now that the butternut squash is all cubed, uh, we're gonna go ahead and prepare it for the oven. I'm gonna add some olive oil. This probably needs about a tablespoon of olive oil. I like to eyeball it whenever I'm baking. It's um, roasting vegetables. Doesn't have to be that precise. And then I'm also gonna add some salt and pepper. So just a nice helping salt, and fresh ground pepper. And to bring out that sweetness and really get a nice caramelization on the butternut squash, I'm also using some maple syrup. So this is definitely gonna scream fall. It's gonna give it a nice sweet and smoky flavor once that maple syrup gets um, crystallized. Let's put this over here, spread it all over. And what goes good with maple syrup? Cinnamon. Okay. Cinnamon is so good on this. If you prefer not to use cinnamon, you don't have to, but I love the sweet flavor that it gives to the butternut squash. So I'm gonna use my hands now and just toss everything together. So give it a nice good toss. And the, the baking dish that I'm using doesn't need to be coated or anything like that. It's super um, durable in the oven and nothing, nothing will stick to it. So I'm just gonna mix everything together we're gonna bake this at 425 for about 40 minutes. So while the squash is in the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and um, prep the onions and garlic to go in the pot. So I have in here a sweet onion. I like to use sweet onions just because it kind of complements the flavor of the butternut squash, but you can use any kind of onions you'd like. So we're just gonna go ahead and chop it up. This is one large onion, so I am gonna actually just use half of it because it is ginormous. So we'll save this for another time and set it aside. And even though it's sweet, it still gets the tears going. Whew. So now um, in the pot right here, I'm gonna go ahead and heat up some olive oil. We'll use about a tablespoon of olive oil. And to that, I'll add the onions I just chopped up. Now we're gonna season it with some salt and some pepper. And we're just gonna cook it for a couple minutes until it becomes softer and more translucent. And you wanna keep stirring on it frequently just because we don't want the onions to burn. While the onions are cooking, I'm gonna mince some garlic. I have in here three cloves of garlic. And we're gonna constantly stir the onions while we're doing this. And once you see that the onions are translucent, that's when you'll add the garlic in. 
Okay, the onion is getting nice and soft, and so we're ready to add the garlic to it. And we don't want to cook the garlic too long because it'll burn, so we just want to saute it for about a minute with the onions. And at this point, if the butternut squash is still roasting in the oven, you can go ahead and turn off the heat and just wait until the butternut squash is done. Um, but if it is done, then you can go ahead and transfer right to it. So we're just gonna wait a, a couple more minutes and then um, put it in here. We actually need to wait 26 minutes uh, for our butternut squash to, be, to finish. So um, we are just gonna take a little break and come right back. Look at these. So they are looking so good, nice and caramelized. They've got a beautiful color on them. They're much softer than when we first put them in and they're ready for the recipe. So what we'll do is we'll open the pot that has the onions and garlic and transfer them in there. Oh, it smells so good already and we haven't even finished making the soup. All right, so now what we're gonna do is add some vegetable broth to it. You can also add chicken broth if you don't mind um, making it um, with chicken. We're gonna give everything a stir and then we want everything to come to a boil and then we'll use an immersion blender just to blend it all together and the soup is done. Okay, so you can see from the pot, it's steaming, it's getting super hot and boily. So I'm just gonna open it. And it smells amazing already. So you can just enjoy it as is, but with butternut squash, there's something about um, having it creamy, smoothy, and silky that just makes it smoothie. Yeah, it's creamy, smooth, and silky. That just makes it so wonderful and so um, cozy and um, appetizing. So what I like to do is I like to take an immersion blender and just blend it all up until it's nice and smooth. Once you're blending it, you can also add some oat milk or some regular milk to the mix. Um, this is especially a good idea if you find that the mixture is way too thick. So add as much as you want. I try to put like half a cup in there and I feel like it's the right amount. So then you'll want to blend it again one more time or just give it a good stir. And now it's nice and smooth and velvety and just looks so good. Um, and if you don't have an immersion blender, you could just transfer the soup into a blender um, and then just work it in batches that way. So that works really well. You can also do it in a food processor. I really like using this tool. It cost me 30 bucks with a couple of other items and I've literally had it for 12 years. So it's been really good for making soup and um, I love how easy it is to use and just keeps things less, uh, less messy. So the soup is all ready. And just for some final touches, I like to add some fresh herbs to it. Thyme is really good this time of the year. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I just like to add some fresh thyme on top. You can also put a dollop of cream if you wanted to. So this is such a wonderful Thanksgiving uh, fall recipe. It's very heartwarming and cozy and it has all those like fall flavors in it. So let me show you guys the consistency of it right here. You can see it's super smooth and velvety and creamy. Um, so delicious and the cool thing is we didn't use any cream we didn't use any butter so um, it's completely vegan and wonderful so I hope you guys try this recipe out and um, we're gonna do a little taste test with uh, my video guy Matt here let's try this bowl <laughs> all right tell me what you think all right he approves you guys this is great um, so glad you like the recipe and if you guys like this recipe and if you guys want to see more of these types of healthy how to feel good recipes please give it a thumbs up and please also hit that subscribe button because um, it really helps me know that you guys like these types of videos and so I can continue making these kind of videos thank you